I'm Gretchen Hirsch. I'm a sewing blogger and author. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a simple blouse pattern to a blouse pattern that buttons up the back. So let me show you what I mean. This is a really cute little pattern. Um, it has these little half inch buttons that go all the way up the back. And this was a really popular look in the 50s and I think it translates really well to today. It's a very cute look. Uh, one thing that people ask me a lot is how, the, um, how you get it on and off by yourself. Um, it's really easy. You can just leave these center buttons done and undo the top and bottom, slip it over your head and then do it by yourself. So you don't even need a man to get it on or off. Uh, it's really also very easy to adapt the pattern. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm using a simple pattern that has a side zipper. I'm gonna omit the side zipper and do the button placket up the back instead. So what we need to do is add an extension at center back. Now if you look at this pattern piece, you'll see it has the cut on fold bracket. So it was intended to be cut on the fold and then opened out. Instead, we're gonna add to center back and then cut two rather than cutting just one on the fold. So you're gonna need your pattern piece. You're gonna need some paper to tape it down to, some scotch tape. So just go ahead and tape it to a piece of paper so that you have something to work with. And we're gonna add an extension to center back. Uh, what I'm showing you today is specifically for half inch buttons. If you wanna use bigger or smaller buttons, it changes the dimensions. So just keep in mind that you're gonna to wanna to be looking for half inch buttons for the instructions that I'm giving you. We're gonna add two and a half inches at center back. So the easiest way to do that is with one of these clear gridded rulers. Just use a pencil and write, from uh, center back, just take it out two and a half inches and make some lines that go up just exactly parallel to that center back fold line. You can make them just every few inches and then we're gonna connect them. Okay, so go ahead and connect that line. So now that we have our vertical line, we want to connect it to the uh, center back neckline and the center back hemline. So go ahead and extend those lines at the top and bottom of the blouse. Okay, so what you've done, it's very simple, like I said, you've just created a little rectangle that's two and a half inches wide at center back, and that's gonna create the extension for the button placket on your blouse. Okay, so now that you have your pattern, you're gonna to wanna to cut it out and go ahead and cut it out in your fabric. Cut your front of the blouse as you normally would. Cut out the back. You're gonna be cutting out two, like I said, and they're gonna have these extensions at center back. You're gonna sew your blouse as you normally would. So any darts, uh, these have little tucks on them. You're gonna hem the sleeves. Anything that you would normally do to finish the blouse, you're gonna do that. Uh, I'm showing it to you flat, so you're not gonna be seeing the front of the blouse, so just keep that in mind. But I have gone ahead and done what I would have done to finish the neckline, which is use a bias binding here. And I've also done the narrow hem at the bottom. So the top and bottom edges are both finished. And now we're going to create the buttonhole placket. So it's very simple. All you have to do is go over to your iron and grab both pieces. You're gonna do this to either side, the left and the right back side. And you wanna have some sort of ruler, either a seam gauge or your clear ruler will work fine. And you're gonna turn the fabric to the inside of the blouse one inch, okay? It's very important that this measurement be precise. So use your ruler and then press up like that. So you create a nice crease. And measure all the way up, keep measuring and pressing. And after you've pressed the entire thing, you're gonna turn it in on itself one time. So you're gonna have a double layer here. Okay, so just turn it in again. So you're turning it in a total of two inches and press. And this is what's called a buttonhole placket. And you're gonna do it on both sides, the left and the right side of the blouse back. And once you have it pressed in place, we're gonna to top stitch it. So you might wanna add a few pins here just to hold, uh, hold that placket in place because we're gonna be stitching it next. So a few pins just uh, perpendicular to the center back like that are fine. And now you're all pressed and ready to stitch it. 
And let's talk about thread choices. So you're going to want to match your thread to your blouse. Uh, in this case, I have two colors that I'm working with. So I could either use this pink or an ivory, uh, depending on if you wanted to get a contrast or to have it blend in really nicely. Uh, I always like to test my thread before I do a project by unraveling a little bit of the spool and just laying it on top there and seeing which I like better. So in this case, I would probably use the pink. Uh, you can either use all-purpose thread or you could use, if you're using a really fine fabric, this is a cotton voile and it, it is quite thin, so you might want to use a fine thread. Uh, so you, you could either use this fine thread, it's also called paper piecing thread, which would be nice if you're using a really delicate fabric. The other option is if you really want your stitching to stand out as a sort of uh, design detail, a top stitching detail, you would use a heavy duty thread. Okay, so that's uh, a third option. Okay, so think about how you want the design effect you want and choose your thread based on that. I'm gonna be using just an all purpose thread in a contrasting color so that you can see it. And I'm gonna be stitching from the inside of the blouse. Uh, if you're using a top stitching thread from in the upper thread, then you're gonna to wanna to be stitching from the outside. All right, so you're gonna stitch right along that fold. And when I'm doing a decorative top stitching, I like to make my stitch length a little bit longer, so I'd probably go up to three millimeters rather than 2.5. All right, so I'm stitching from the inside. I'm gonna go a few stitches forward. You, you can back stitch or you can tie your threads off when you're done, it's up to you. And I'm gonna stitch as close to that line as possible. So take it really slow here because this stitching is gonna be very visible on the outside of your blouse. stitch all the way down. And so this is gonna form that placket. On one side it's going to be for the buttonholes, on the other side it's going to be for the buttons to be stitched to. So you're gonna grab either side of your blouse. You have both the left and the right side, the backs. Okay, we're gonna place this down here. And work from the outside of the blouse. And you're going to pin the uh, the placket as it's going to be sewn. So you're gonna overlap those two one inch extensions and the buttons are gonna go down the center here. Okay, so you're gonna place the buttonholes on the left side as you're looking at the blouse. And uh, I like to put the first buttonhole right underneath the binding here. Okay, so I would place it right about there. Now before I get too far placing the buttons, let's go back and look at the original blouse. So you can see, here's that first button right underneath the neckline binding. And I've placed eight buttons all the way down. It's very important for a professional look that your button holes be evenly spaced. So I've made sure to put an exact inch and a half between each of the button holes so that it looks nice and professional. And I've also left a little bit open at the bottom just for a bit of wearing ease because this type of blouse would po probably be tucked into a skirt or a pair of pants. So you're not gonna see that bottom button anyway. Okay, so let's talk about actually marking your button holes. So the buttonholes are gonna go on this left-hand side. I like to use uh, my clear ruler and a disappearing ink marker. And what I do is I'm gonna make vertical buttonholes and they're gonna go right down the center of this one inch placket, okay? So usually what I'll do is place the button where I want it and then put a little mark at the top and at the bottom. And then I'm gonna connect those two dots with a little line. Now I want my buttonhole to be at least an eighth of an inch bigger than the actual button so that it do, it's not hard to actually put the button through the buttonhole. I'm gonna go down again another inch and a half. And again, I'm just gonna mark five eighths of an inch, top and, top and bottom. And then I'm gonna go over to the machine and make my buttonholes. Now you might have an attachment at home a buttonhole foot that looks like this, which is gonna help you make all of your buttonholes uniform. And it has this little uh, sort of slide thing here where you place your buttonhole, I'm sorry, you place your button, and uh, you close it. And that gauges the size of the buttonhole. So of course, after you've made your buttonholes, you're gonna sew your buttons to the right side of the blouse. And now you have this great vintage style blouse that looks just as great today.